okay here is the second part of the tutorial that we started yesterday uh, about the, the convection and the radiation uh, modeling in ANSYS Fluent. In the first part we did the geometry inside the space claim and we meshed the geometry inside the mesh tool and in the second part we are going to start the modeling and uh, uh, modeling the the problem inside the ANSYS Fluent. If you remember the model, uh, the problem, it was about uh, a rectangle uh, with the length of uh, L1 and as you can see in the picture the, the, the walls on the bottom and the top are adiabatic which means there is no heat transfer from the top and bottom while uh, the left and right has the temperature of 1000 and 2000 Kelvin respectively. In order to achieve this uh, non-dimensional numbers such as uh, Rayleigh, Prontil and uh, PL uh, with this value of 5e5, e, uh, Prontil of 0.71 and uh, PL of 0.02 uh, we define these properties of the, the medium, the fluid uh, such as density, CPK, mu, beta, G as defined here in this picture. The density is 1000, CP is uh, as you can see, K is 15.309, mu is 1e minus 3, beta is 1e minus 5, and J which is the gravitational acceleration is minus uh, 6.96e minus 5. So let us start the problem inside ANSYS Fluent and uh, it's so simply just clicking on the setup and you open up the ANSYS Fluent. I actually have done this uh, problem once for myself but we will go through it one more time. So we start with the model itself on the top. Uh, actually we start with the, with the general uh, settings and here you can see that the solver is set to pressure based, the velocity formulation is absolute to the space of uh, planar and the time is a steady state. And of course the gravity is set to on because we are solving the gravitational problem and as I said uh, in order to achieve the numbers the non-dimensional numbers I have defined the acceleration gravity to minus 7 e minus 5 then the next part comes and uh, that is defining the model for the model we can start with the energy we are going to solve the energy equation of course we uh, activate the energy equation and then in the viscous model we simply use the laminar uh, model because uh, this is a laminar problem there is no turbulence here and in the second part uh, for the materials uh, we have two material which is one fluid and the other one is solid uh, for the the medium which is uh, the fluid inside the rectangle uh, of course the name is air it's, it's just a name it doesn't mean that it's really air uh, but uh, here we can change the properties. Uh, in the density we define the Boussinesq uh, Boussinesq option with the density of 1000. The CP is set to constant value of 11,000. The thermal conductivity is around 15 and the viscosity is 0.001 SI unit and the thermal expansion coefficient is set to 1E minus 5. So once you have made these changes in your properties of the air, you just click change create and then close it. For the other one, which is the solid aluminum, uh, we will keep it as uh, uh, default values. The density CP and the thermal conductivity of aluminum is uh, default values and you just close it. Then it comes to the boundary conditions. Uh, if you remember in the meshing, we defined four walls, bottom, left, right and the top one. So for the bottom one, uh, of course, uh, for the momentum part, this is a stationary wall and uh, the shear condition is no slip. But for the thermal, we define the heat flux of zero, which means this is adiabatic. There is no heat flux through the wall. There is no heat transfer. We press apply and then close it. This is the same for the top side. Again, for the top side, uh, the thermal conductivity, uh, the thermal conductivity, uh, the thermal heat flux is set to zero, and just close it. But for the left side, uh, again for the temperature, 
this time we set it to temperature and we define the temperature of 1000 Kelvin and for the right side we have the temperature of 2000 Kelvin if you remember uh, then the second the, the last part is uh, really start to make the simulation and here are some uh, yeah solution methods for example for the pressure velocity coupling I'm using simple approach and uh, for the pressure spatial discretization I'm using presto and the momentum and energy are all set to second order up in the scheme uh, in the control um, all these values are default the under relaxation factors are set to 0.3 for pressure density 1 momentum is 0.7 and energy is 1 so nothing is really changed here so when it comes to the monitoring uh, you can of course uh, plot all the residuals for the continuity velocity of x and y direction and also the energy if you want to plot it make sure that you put the plot on uh, when I was defining the model I forgot to mention that I have for this for, for, for the moment I have set the radiation to off I'm just trying to uh, simulate the simulation for the uh, natural convection so there is no really radiation from right to left so I'm putting it to off for this part and then we will come back to this for another simulation uh, yeah so for the residual we're going to plot the residuals and then uh, we start to initialize the problem to initialize the problem you can simply use the standard initialization you can put the gauge pressure to zero x velocity and y velocity of uh, zero and you can put the temperature of uh, 1500 and then you can just initialize it so the pl problem is initialized and then I will start to run the simulation for let's say 200 you put the number of iteration to 200 and uh, you press the calculate and if you look at the residuals you can see that the residuals for the continuity and all the, everything else like velocity and energy is going down and it has reached a steady state so the simulation is complete after around 150 simulation 50 150 iterations so let us just plot some uh, variables for example we can plot the contour let's plot the contour plot of the temperature you select the contour on the left side and then you can select the temperature for example from this drop down menu and just save and display and here you can see that the convection has happened from this wall toward, toward the top side and uh, you can clearly see that the temperature is higher here and it's lower here and it's the recirculation uh, around uh, uh, this rectangle you can also plot some vector uh, vector of the velocity for example so here you can see that under the vector I'm going to plot for the velocity and uh, I have put the scale to 5 and I'm going to skip uh, every 10 arrows so if I just zoom out a little bit you can see that uh, you can clearly see that the velocity is higher in this side and it's going up and it's recirculating very nicely and it's just uh, going down and uh, recirculation is very clear uh, yeah this was the convection problem for this uh, simple geometry and uh, now you can add the radiation as well so let us have both convection and radiation on and for radiation let us start with this uh, Rosalund there are several uh, radiation models uh, the simplest one is the Rosalund and then you have the P1 and then you have this DTRM and S2S and discrete ordinates uh, maybe we can try several of them maybe two or three of them and then compare them together uh, to understand the difference between all these models I strongly suggest that you go to the help of this section and uh, read all these uh, 
models go through it and understand uh, what is really being done in each of these models inside ANSYS Fluent uh, black box. But let us start with Rosalind and then um, I'll just make it uh, uh, on for Rosalind and then press OK. Maybe I don't want to initialize my problem. My problem is already solved to some extent. I'll just continue the calculation from here and I will run it for another let's say 400 iterations and uh, we will see how the residuals go. Yeah, so you can see that the problem has started uh, to solve the iteration is being done. Uh, seems like it's going down for both uh, continuity equation and the momentum and energy equation. Uh, yeah, so the problem is uh, solved. The number of iteration has reached to 360 and it has reached a steady state it seems. Uh, let's uh, look back at the contour plots for the temperature for example. And this time you can see that the temperature uh, is a bit different. So let me uh, just uh, let's make this auto range to 100, 1000 and save and display. Yeah. So here this time you can see that uh, the radiation is the a dominant uh, problem here and you don't see much of that contour plot anymore. And you can see that the temperature from uh, around 200 is uh, decreasing and decreasing toward the left until it reaches uh, 100 on the plate itself sorry 1000 Kelvin and um, I can also plot the contour plot of the velocity for example uh, probably not for the velocity but uh, let's see if it's possible to plot for the velocity as well yeah so you can see that for the velocity as well you can have the this behavior here maybe we can see it in the vector plot better so if I plot the vector plot of this and then I'll just uh, make it smaller you can see that with the radiation on there is such a beautiful recirculation of the the flow inside this rectangular uh, shape it is actually circulating around the middle of this rectangle uh, let us try another model of the radiation for example we can this time we can try the discrete transfer uh, the energy iterations per radiation iteration I would like to put it to 15 the maximum number of radiation iterations I will put it to 10 and the residual convergence criteria I'll keep it as default I press OK so if you want uh, you can initialize it or you can simply uh, run it from where you are, but let me just initialize it again with the constant value of uh, 1500 uh, across the rectangle and Then I will run it for another 200 or 400 Let's see this time. What do we get? Yeah So residuals are going down and it's uh, reaching the steady state after around 160 iterations so if you look back at the velocity vectors and uh, actually the contour plot of the temperature you can clearly see the difference between the Rosalind and uh, uh, the other method which is more accurate and more uh, complicated and complex so you can see that here this time for example you have the velocity very similar to that of convection which is uh, going from the side of the wall the right wall all the way to the top and then it's recirculating around the left side and it's going like this it is very different from what you saw it from the Rosalind model and if you check the contour the vector actually the contour plot of uh, the temperature itself you can see that it's very very different from the Rosalind uh, approximation we can try with another model and uh, 
see the difference also here let's try for example the discrete ordinates this time and uh, let's make the theta divisions to 2, phi divisions to 2, theta pixel to 2 and phi pixel 2 I again uh, encourage you to go to the help and uh, understand all this uh, angular discretization and all these uh, non-gray models as well. Uh, read the explanation, read the documents and uh, understand really what you're doing. So I'll press OK. And uh, maybe I would like to initialize it again and run it for 400 iterations. Uh, let it initialize first and then we can compare the difference between this model and uh, the other two that we just did yes uh, the run calculation is uh, right here I think I missed it uh, here is the initialization and then uh, run calculation right here so let us run for 400 and then we can track also the residual it's uh, going very similar to the previous model and probably the results also look very similar <laughs> so this time after 350 iterations we reached a steady state uh, solution and as you can see the contour plot of temperature is very similar to the previous one and also the vector plot of the velocity for example if I display it and then uh, zoom it back you can see that it's uh, much more similar to the previous one actually the the other model that we did on the second time so the discrete transfer so I think this was the tutorial that I wanted to show you the difference between the Rosalind and the different other options like discrete transfer and discrete ordinates so if you want to do it more in details please uh, read the documents read the help and uh, make sure to understand all these uh, details for these models thank you for watching this tutorial I'll come back with more complex geometries and more specific problems uh, later on